Okay, I have a co-pilot right now. This is Maggie, and uh, she's getting jealous, so we're just going to have to deal. Okay, so the next part of our um, notes is going to talk about lipids. And lipids are going to be really important because that's what our cell membranes are made of. That's what a lot of our steroids and things like that are made of, our um, hormones. So they're very, very, very important. Um, so these guys are going to be different because they don't have those repeating monomers like the other ones that we've talked about. So that's going to be a little bit different. Um, um, now, if we take a look, <laughs> if we take a look at um, this slide right here, you can see up here we've got a saturated lipid, and down here we have unsaturated. So I'll give you a couple minutes, and hopefully you can tell the difference between <laughs> saturated versus unsaturated. So one thing hopefully that you've noticed is that the unsaturated is going to be bent, right? And where it bends, there's actually a double bond. So that's going to be important when we talk about um, the sources that they come from and why they look a certain way chemically. Now, um, the saturated here, you can see that's all single bonds, and it doesn't have that kink. So the unsaturated one has a double bond and a kink. And also, if you look, because it has that double bond, it's going to have less hydrogen. Now, as far as where they come from, um, saturated fats, which are going to be the one that was straight, are going to come from animal fats. And so these are going to be solid at room temperature, as opposed to an unsaturated fat, which is going to have that double bond in the kink, that's going to be liquid at room temperature. Now the reason for that is because, I like that previous one better, um, the saturated fat, which is going to be solid at room temperature, they're going to be solid because they're straight and they can just kind of build like building blocks right on top of each other, no problem. Whereas the unsaturated ones, you can see how this has that little kink, so they can't really stack up very evenly and that's why they're a liquid at room temperature. Now we tend to think of saturated fats as the ones that are a little bit more dangerous as far as like heart health and stuff, and that's because saturated fats can stack up really nicely like that right along your arteries and they can eventually clog them. So that's why they're a little bit worried about them as far as health-wise goes. Okay, <clears throat> so there's all of our information about those types. Now, as far as the types of lipids go, the first type that you're probably most familiar with are going to be fat molecules. And so these are going to be hydrocarbons. So hopefully you can put that together and say, okay, hydro, that means hydrogen, and carbon obviously means carbon, um, that are going to be about 16, 18 carbons long. So if we look here, we've got a fat molecule, okay? Now what's interesting about this is everywhere that you see that little line is a bond and that means it's going to store energy in those bonds. So fat is a really great way to store energy is one thing that you can think about. Okay, um, then the next one is going to be phospholipids. Now phospholipids are going to be um, what our cell membranes and things are going to be made up of. And I've got a picture of them. <clears throat> Uh, right here. You're going to see them in your book mostly like this where they've got that polar head and then they've got the um, little tails that are hanging down there. Now what's going to happen is um, a phospholipid is going to have this phosphate part here and then it's going to have the fatty tails hanging down here. And when you expose it to water what's going to happen is these, these three possibilities. Now as far as our cell membranes go they're mostly going to look like this bottom picture here. And so if you think about it down here would be the inside of the cell up here would be the outside of the cell, and there's going to be water inside and outside. And so what's going to happen is the little ball parts there are going to be the ones that like water, so they're going to face the water. And then these hydrophobic tails are all going to be in the center away from the water, right? So that's how your um, cell membranes are going to be set up. <clears throat> all right. Then the last type is going to be steroids. And steroids are going to be found in the form of cholesterol. And as you're going to learn in a later chapter when we talk about membranes, cholesterol is super important. But also sex hormones are going to be in this category as well. So those are all going to be lipids. Now the last one that we're going to talk about is going to be carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are going to have a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1 for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So you can see here C6H12O6 if we, were divide, bleh, if we were to divide all of these by the number 6, it would be 1 to 1. And that's what I mean by the ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. So let's say you had something that was C12, then it would be C12, H24, O12, right? So it's always that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. 
So the building blocks of carbohydrates are going to be monosaccharides. So just like in all those other drawings I've done, the, the little circles would be monosaccharides. I'm not even going to try and draw that because that's such a long word and it'll never fit. Um, so those are going to be single molecules of sugar. Then you've got disaccharides. And disaccharides, just like it sounds, are going to be two monosaccharides together. And then the polysaccharides are going to be really, really, really long chains of monosaccharides. So as far as examples of these go, um, for monosaccharides, you've got glucose as an example of that. Um, for disaccharides, sucrose, which is table sugar, would be an example of that. And then polysaccharides are going to be those big, long ones, and that would be like a potato or rice or something like that. Okay. So once again, they're going to have a special name for the bond between the monomers. And that's going to be a glycosidic linkage for these ones, okay? So I know you'll hate it, but I'm going to draw it out anyway because I know how much you just must love my awesome art. So uh, I'm going to clear this. So once again, we've got our, um, whoops, what did I do? Oh, no, it went away. Um, let's see. There it is. Okay, so we've got our, um, oh, whoops, I keep doing that. I'm so sorry. Okay. Technology is scary to me. Okay, so we've got OH, then we're going to have our monomers, and H on this side. So in here are going to be our monosaccharides, right? I'm just going to say mono because that's all that's going to fit in here. And then we're going to have a special name for the bonds there, and that's going to be that glycosidic linkage, right? So that's going to actually link these together, okay? So that's the special name for the bond that they have. Okay, so um, one thing about these polysaccharides is they're going to have two functions. They can either be used for storage or for structure. So if we're going to use them for storage, in um, plants, they're going to be in the form of starch. Um, in animals, it's going to be in the form of glycogen. So glycogen is how we can store energy in our liver. We really don't have a lot of it. We've got about enough for like one day of energy. Um, but that's going to be the difference between animals and plants as far as storage uh, polysaccharides go. Then structurally, we can have it in the form of cellulose, which is going to be what makes plant cell walls. So that's going to be in plants or it can be in the form of chitin. And chitin, I have got a picture here I can show you if I keep going here. Um, chitin is going to be what makes up the exoskeleton of all these organisms that you see here. So we don't have chitin in us, but if we were going to have an exoskeleton, that would probably be what it would be made of. Um, so that's going to be how that works. Now, one thing that we call cellulose in the dietary world is we call it fiber. And um, if you think about when you eat a lot of fiber, right, that kind of goes right through you. And that's because we don't have the enzymes to digest cellu cellulose. Now, some organisms that eat a lot of cellulose, so a lot of like herbivores, they're going to actually have special enzymes in their stomachs to help them digest that cellulose, to help them break that down. Um, so we don't have that enzyme, so that's why we can't digest it. Okay, now just down here at the bottom, I thought it would kind of be helpful to have the names of the different macromolecules that have that like monomer um, making up the polymer setup. So um, let me make this a tiny bit smaller so you can actually see it all in one. There we go. So for macromolecules, we have proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. The one that's left off of here is going to be lipids, and that's because those don't have those building blocks. So for proteins, the building blocks will be amino acids, and the name for the bond between the amino acids <clears throat> is going to be a peptide bond. For nucleic acids, the name of the building blocks will be nucleotides, and the name for the covalent bond between them is a phosphodiester bond. Then finally, carbohydrates, the building blocks will be monosaccharides, and then the name of the bond between them is a glycosidic linkage. So I just thought it would be easier to see that in a table to kind of help you figure that out. So that's going to be our macromolecules. I hope you enjoyed it.